Well, today we're going to look at the low TX40, which uses the World Sound PT40 chassis. Uh, this is the best of the PT40s. I don't think I've got any problems with any of the PT40s. Uh, you've got the um, the other better one is the Grandstand Hawk, and then you get the more ordinary ones like the Viper 88, the Braemar PT40, the Smoky Bear, the Sun 402, I think it was, the there's a Comtel one, was there, or was it uh, Eurosonic? Anyway, it, the list goes on. There's quite a few of the PT40s, and we have done one in the past. I think we did the Grandstand Hawk back in 2014. This is one I bought about four years ago um, for this very purpose in its box, and I've never opened up this box. It's something we bought off eBay. I just book them in and till we have the time and we've got the time at the moment so let's see hey look at this it comes with a destruction book we'll get that scanned it'll I tell you what the instructions oh we've got a, a squirky diagram as well even better um, we do have a service manual as well um, third-party service manual but it's uh, it's on a trader sheet um, the instruction book for the normal PT40, um, I think it came with the Braemar version, um, when it discusses the squelch control, it's got the most brilliant Taiwanese translation um, about be pleased to adjust the phase Chang requalitive. I thought, well, I'm sure they have plenty of phase Chang requalitives, but here in England, we don't. Now, it, it's a uh, squelch control. This control allows you to silence the noise you would normally hear in the absence of a received signal. Yeah, I mean, it, it's properly worded that. That's excellent. Right, well, try not to rustle that against the microphones. Oh, we've got the factory mic, we've got the bracket, it's a well used set and it's even got a short lead with a fuse still there and comes with some free insulating tape. So I'm going to open this up and we'll have a look what's inside. I've noticed the meters uh, migrated inside the radio. I don't know whether they're just stuck by double-sided sticky pads or something on this, but uh, that's something we'll need to look into. And I've got, funnily enough, I've got another one on the shelf, uh, which is in a bit of a state, which is why I chose to do this one. Um, perhaps I ought to investigate that at the same time. That doesn't appear to have got a display or a meter, but perhaps I bought it like that. This is the other one, uh, it hasn't got any lids, so whether or not we've got them, whether it came in as a scrap chassis, I don't know, it's certainly, uh, it's lost its LED display, it has got the meter, so uh, it's lost its knobs. Um, so obviously somebody thought that nicking the display out of it was more value than what the set was, and uh, that's a shame because I think they're underappreciated. We might have a look at this, despite it if there's not too much missing, we might have a look at this together at the end of, the, uh, of doing this one. Despite it not having a display, uh, it might be possible to do something with it. Anyway, I'm sure another scrap chassis will turn up one day. So, back to this. I'm going to dig the service manual out and I'll be right back. Most 2781 sets have their own file. That was our original report on it. And there's a magazine article from Citizens Band, December 1982. But, um, to be honest, they they seem to say everything was wonderful. And uh, oh, we've already got a photocopy of the instruction book. 
and then we've got the service sheet which is done by a trader and what we will do is to make up our usual little chart because it's so much quicker um, if we just have the major components on my little badly drawn charts and with them coloured in for green and red you know so it just makes it easier for other engineers um, so we've got everything we could possibly want to know about this set that's fantastic makes a change There's a bit more to set up than on a lot of radios and apart from L1 we've got instructions for everything so basically um, the, the transmit is L5, L6, L11, L12 and then trimming L8 for your 4 watts variable resistor 1 is TX meter Variable resistor 9 is delta tune. There's a, quite a procedure with that, with test points. Low power is variable resistor 10. Where are, I've hidden that. There, there. Variable resistor 4 is deviation, which is there. Then on receive, you've got L2, which is dealt with with a test point 3 for maximum. Um, L4 is the is part of the VCO on the receive, so we'll come to that. L14 is the, the now we start with the normal lineup for receive. L14, L15, L16, L17, L18, L19, L20. L21 is the detector. Variable resistor 2 is the squelch, and variable resistor 3 is the S meter, wherever I've hidden that. There. So we'll get on with the VCO. So this is quite complex. I said there's an awful lot of adjustments, but I think this is what makes it a good radio. So just so you know what's underneath it, that's what's underneath it. I've temporarily shoved the meter back into position. I'm going to have to use hot glue gun. It's double-sided tape it's fitted with, and over 38 years that's failed. So it's only just hanging on in there. But I don't want it floating around or it could end up shorting something out. So we'll switch on. Oh, that's a noisy volume control. Um, right, we'll deal with that immediately. So I'll turn off the power supply and we'll apply the service I'll switch cleaner. Mm, just hoping it's the type you can clean. It's a bit of an enclosed type, this. And they can be difficult to get any of the chemical in there. What I'm doing is spraying it through the rivet holes in the hope that they go through. I'll just work that around and switch it back on and see whether I've been a failure or not. Yeah, I've got some in there, it's clearly. Right, so we now need to. So we're greeted with no display. When I press the mic, we've got no transmit light. Um, so I'm going to switch it to PA and we'll see whether it works as a PA amplifier. We'll just plug the speaker into there instead. One, two, one, two, testing one, two. 
and as you can tell there's nothing coming out of the speaker so we're going to have to fault find it and getting it to work on public address is usually what fixes it it's a very easy fault find so I'll have a look at the circuit diagram probably sold to me as working you know what it's like so public address amplifier camera's remote on the floor. So we've got the public address speaker there, we've got the audio amplifier here, and somewhere, somewhere we'll have a microphone pre-amplifier arrangement. So I think what we just need to do for a start is if we a signal on pin 5 or 7 of the audio amplifier well of course we should get something coming out of the speaker so the audio amplifier is there and I'm just trying to see Yeah, pin 1 is this end. There's a notch for pin 1. So I've got the volume on full. So count down 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Not, it's not the volume it, it should be that at all. Right, I'll just do a bit of fault finding behind the scenes and I'll tell you what my conclusion is if I come to one. Well, after a lot of searching, I think we've come to the conclusion. And that is, there's a wire off that white wire, which is from the centre connection of the public address switch. I could see there was no power getting anywhere and I would think that that is power. I think if I just put my meter there and probe it, if the set was on, it's not helped by the meter light being intermittent. Oh, and a negative is off as well. Hmm. Well, oh, there we are. Did you see that for a second? Yep, yeah, I reckon. I think we've cracked it. So I'll solder that back on. And let's hope we get somewhere. Because as part of the diagnosis, I've been changing one or two capacitors around the amplifier because they're dirt cheap, they're 38 years old, and the way it was making that little weak noise, I thought we've got duff capacitors there, so I've swapped one or two of those. Won't do any harm anyway. Oh, great, we're now greeted with a display. So we're getting somewhere. It says receive. It's, uh, yeah, it goes to transmit. I can see it's doing some transmit power, and hopefully, public address now works. Testing one, two, it does. Oh, great. Well, that was a bit of a corker because it was so kind of held by the uh, the plastic, it must have corroded away or something. But um, that was a real corker of a fault. 
Okay, um, so back to the notes. Um, so we start with selecting channel one. Channel one, I'll just turn the volume down. And it says everything it says is in receive mode unless otherwise stated. So the first thing we're going to do is align coil 4, L4, and find my clipboard. L4 is this, which I haven't, uh, I would think is something to do with the VCO. So what we need, it says, is an RF voltmeter. So our beautiful Russian RF voltmeter comes out. And what we need to do, does it say, is we need to connect it to test point one. So we've got to find where test point one is. Okay, well, I'll put the recorder back on when I found test point one. Test point one is capacitor 68. It's the junction between L4's output and capacitor 68. So, capacitor 68. It's got a very short bit of wire. my great big chunky Russian probe it's not going to go down there very easily it might have to probe it on the other side of the radio which makes it fun to adjust so if I get my tool in L4 ready See, we've got a reading there, so just need to peak that, and as you'll see, that is better than as the radio was presented. So that's L4 done. So I think the thing to do there is to colour that in. We'll say that's part of the uh, the VCO arrangement. I think. Wow, that's one thing done. So, let's, I think we can put that meter away. That would probably be not the right thing. Let's see what the next stage is. Um, connect a frequency meter to test point one via a divide by two probe and adjust CT2 for 10.24046 so let's see where on the circuit test point 2 is because I might not do it that way is that the reference oscillator for the no it's not yes it is um, CT2 yeah we're going to adjust that on transmit for the correct transmitted frequency. So we're not going to do that. Um, we'll do that my way, not their way. And we might be in a position where we can actually... Right, I've got to plug the aerial in now. It's no good transmitting into nothing or we'll have an even more broken radio. Is to do this on channel one, which we wouldn't normally do. So I'm going to put the other camera on so you can see the frequency counter. So 
So the next thing we need to do is test point two, which is the junction between resistor eight and capacitor twenty six. Resistor eight and capacitor twenty six. Then we'll be adjusting CT one. So let's see if I can see that. Yes. Certainly see capacitor two anyway. Oh, 72, I said. So test point two, the capacitor 26 and resistor eight, resistor three. Three eight, capacitor 26. Yes. So chances are it's going to be the green mylar capacitor there. It's going to be there, is the test point. It'd be easier if they wrote these things down, wouldn't it? And I think this is the VCO one. So yes it is, so we're staying on channel 1 and so we need to be between test point 2 and earth and we're looking for 2 volts, 2 volts with CT1. So earth, capacitor 6, I could put a crocodile clip on. And as you can see, we've got 1.74. And then we're adjusting, I've forgotten already, CT1. So CT1 is down there. Wrong way, it's always the wrong way. And 1.9 now will do me fine. So that's another one we've done, that's the VCO. So next, incidentally they want you to do the receiver first and we're not going to do the receiver first. So, um, section uh, point four, select channel 20. There we go, channel 20. And connect an RF millivolt meter to test test point three, the junction of capacitor 63 and L2, and adjust the coil for maximum. So test point three is the junction of capacitor three and L2. So there's L2, capacitor 63, it's going to be somewhere nearby, hopefully. Yes, it's there. So we better get the Russian millivolt meter back. Now this is another fun one because again the probe is too big to to probe. So we're going to be adjusting I've forgotten already L2. So L2 which is that one there. So I'm going to have to do this on the underside again. See if I can find my way around. 
and we're wanting maximum. So I can just find the other side of that. might be easier to find the output of L2 yeah I've got it oh, it's a very small signal I've got this on the absolute maximum and it's only just moving so Wow, look at the difference there. That's phenomenal. That was out of alignment, wasn't it? Right, we'll put that back once again. Can't possibly need it a third time. Right, I think we'll be swapping over now for the uh, meter on the test set for the power coming out of it which because that's what we're going to be moving over to I am sure I've decided not to be awkward and we will go so I'm going to skip to the transmitter now connect an RF power meter to the aero socket and set high low power to high switch to transmit adjust calls 5 6 11 and 12 for maximum 5, 6, 11 and 12. So it's 5, 6, 11 and 12 for maximum. And then you move to L8 to set for 4 watts. So let's see what we can get. So it's doing more than 3 watts. In fact, it's doing 3.9. So there's the 4 line. It's just lower than it. A lot of these came out of the box doing more than 4 watts. I remember we had a problem. No, I'm not saying the low in particular but the radius with this chassis. So that is peak. And that is peak. That is peak. Isn't it funny? All the stuff that's been fiddled with is at the difficult end. You know, the, the things, the adjustments that are difficult to achieve. I've just come to wait for the soldering iron to warm up um, because I'm going to have to melt the wax in that core. There we are, that's peak on that one. And then it says L8, which is that one there. Try the yellow tool. And there we go, 4 watts. It'll just do 4 watts on here, so it's probably a bit more than that on a CB type meter. Good. Now let's see what else they want us to set up. So VR1.
is the RF meter. So that's the one at the back there, VR1. Unfortunately, it's on a silly angle. So it's in the middle of that zone, the red zone, but you can hardly see it because the meter lamp is intermittent. So that's another adjustment done. So now, haha, this is a fun one. Check that the Delta Tune control is switched off. It is now. Adjust preset VR9 with the frequency counter suitably connected to the aerial output. Well, we've we've actually done that. <laughs> yeah, I know what the, I can see with that. Yeah, we've done that. But we'll just trim it. VR126 and VR9. Yeah, we see there's me knowing know it all. And we did need to do the the um 10.24046 exactly as they said because of the delta tune so we need to go back to test point one and we need to probe that how annoying so we've got the frequency counter set up and it should be 10.24046 24050 so it was minutely out from their method and that would have thrown the delta tune and there's CT1 Twenty-two four zero four six two four zero two four zero four six and a bit. That'll do nicely. 10.24046, that's where we want it. So, see, I was wrong to do it my way. And that would have stopped the Delta Tune working properly. So now, we switch the Delta Tune to the off position, go into transmit, and just VR9 to give us the frequency for channel 20. Which 
course, is 27.79125. So it's VR9 to adjust that. There we have it, 2779125. Excellent. Okay, so we we'll move on to the receiver main adjustments. If I can find the trimming tool, which is there. So we're looking at. Oh, they want you to do. Um, Right, they want you to do the. No, they don't. 14, I was going to say they want you to do the S meter, they don't. So it's 14, 15, 16, 17. 14, 15, 16, 17. 18, 19. And then 20 is going to be the detective. So I've got down as 21. I think that's a printing error. So 14, 15, 16. That's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's never the detector. Yeah, that's right, it's ambiguous. 21's the detector, that's it. So here goes. So with the sign of meter actually switched on and precariously balanced. So that's... We're off frequency on the signal drains in there. Okay, there we are. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, just back off the scene signal generator, twenty. I'm going to go through those again. 14. We don't want scratchy corner to be scratchy at all. 14. 15. 16. Back off the signal range there. 17. 18, 19, 20. And then we'll go to S9 and we'll get maximum recovered audio from the oscilloscope. So I'll just move over to the oscilloscope screen. So we're competing with the radio, it must be on the hour. Oh, it's just coming up to 4 o'clock. The radios come on to the background music system and we need to adjust L21 for maximum. So there's L21. I'll just move that up to a different sensitivity so it's easy to see. 
and there we have that that's set good I think we can lose that camera now that's very sensitive by the way um, I'll just tell you that's 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.06, 0 0.6. I'm still receiving that. It's off the clock on the signal generator. You know, this is like some of the really modern sets can do. Not all do. But you can see there's a lot of adjustments and there's a lot of faffing and a lot of different types of test equipment it's not that simple so we're going to be no doubt setting yes we're going to set VR3 for S9 on the meter VR3 I'll put the bench light back on then I can see as well as you is that one there it was actually spot on good So now it's going to be squelch. So switch the signal generator off, set the squelch to threshold. Switch the signal generator on, it's come straight in. Put the squelch to full, turn the signal generator up. 1 microvolt, 3 microvolts, 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts, 100 microvolts, 300 microvolts. That's fine. So it's about um, plus 20 is the maximum. But just for the video, the adjustment is VR2. So looking at my crib sheet, VR2 is the preset just there. So I don't need to adjust it on this one, but that's what it is. So I think we've covered it I think that's everything we've set them oh we haven't done deviation have we um, that's an interesting point why haven't I done deviation high low power I went I kind of jumped straight onto the receiver so VR4 is deviation and that is the preset here at the front so we'll go back to transmit and we'll put the camera I've gone and switched the signal generator off we'll go and put the camera on to the deviation meter. So with a little oscillator on, we're not getting a lot of deviation, it is 1.5. So although this radio is being played with, they've kind of fiddled with all the delicate things that you wouldn't ever adjust. Somebody with limited equipment, you'd think they'd try and bring up the power output and do the deviation, but they wouldn't fiddle with the VCO and the uh, and they have, and it's unusual that it's been fiddled with like that. Or perhaps they just think everything should be screwed down tight because the radio had stopped working. Um, I will test those capacitors that we took out from the audio section in case any of them are faulty because that will be interesting. And I'll do that in front of you. So we're just doing deviation. That is VR4. That's the one to the right. See how that is with the whistle test. Wallow. Wallow. Actually, it needs to come up a bit. That's interesting. So we'll set that to 2.5 on the oscillator. Wallow. That's now spot on. 2.2, 2.4, 2 somewhere like around there. Interestingly enough, if you were to, if you're in a factory situation, then you would put your signal generator into the microphone socket, 
at the exactly the right level, probably four millivolts, something like that, and every radio would be set up the same. But when you're dealing with loads and loads of different sets, that's why we use the external oscillator into the mic provided. What they have said, you wouldn't believe they've put in a service manual. With, the, with a sustained whistle into the microphone, or feeding a one kilohertz audio tone, or just the preset VR4. So he actually said whistles act is adequate, which it is. But uh, it's the repeatability that we use the oscillator. I think that's it. No, I, I, we are. We're done. We're done. So all this setting up the Delta Tune. So what I said at the beginning is uh, apart, you know, setting up. Uh, CT2 for the usual channel 20, 2779, 125 was a load of bunkum from me, and you set it on these radios for, and I'm going to write this in, um, it is 27, sorry, it's 10.24046 at test point one. I'll have uploaded these to scribe these service manuals so that they are available for free use. So that's a bit of a faff and that's so that we get the Delta Tune working. I'll demonstrate that um, because it will now work as it should do. So you see Sound like we've got an earth on there. It's not an earth chassis on these, it's um it's floating. So I actually need a crocodile clip lead. Nothing to beat a red one. So if we go from one of the coils, yeah. No earth on there. That sounds better. Oh, I've still got that meter lamp to do and to put a bit of hot glue on that. I don't know why it's intermittent. I'll, I'll look into that in a sec. Um, so the Delta tune. Let's put a small signal on. There we are. Three microvolts. Now we'll turn the Delta tune on. Look, it's gone off frequency. Center position. Plus position. Excellent. Okay, well, I'll do the light bulb and then we'll put it together and put it on the aerial just for 10 seconds. No doubt later on we'll do a, a, a proper range test with Mr. Chippy. So I found that the case has got those awful self tapper screws, and so I've decided we're going to put M3 threads in, so I've threaded the thing. And I've put nice new M3 black screws in. Now then, these capacitors that I took out as part of my diagnosis, probably totally unnecessarily, I will just put on this ESR meter and we'll see what this should be. And then it will be, whether was I right to change some of them? So this should be 47 microfarads. Fifty-three. That's indicative of it being. I think the word is knackered. They go high slightly before they either go short or open circuit. So thirty-eight years old at the end of the day, aren't they? This is ten. No, it's probably four point seven. That's fine. That's uh, five point six. That would have been fine. Two out of the uh, amplifier. Four hundred and seventy. These should be. Five hundred and seventy. It's uh, starting to fail. Another four hundred and seventy. Again, a bit high. Thirty-three. 
not one of our usual UK preferred values, but we have them in stock. 40, oh, it's starting. This should be 47. Fifty-five. That's fair enough. They're all going in the vertical filing cabinet. I've actually got this CB on an aerial. That's one, and it should be one. Spot on. Right away. And finally, ten. Twelve. So only one of those was really scary but they've been changed that must have cost me all of 80 pence to do that so I've got this on the aerial oh that's the nice new screws and uh, of course this is an immaculate in a box set isn't it you know Nineteen nineteen a Roger. No. Okay, well we'll do an on the air test later on. So we had the service manual, we went through it meticulously and I've no doubt this is gonna work very well because the sensitivity is off the clock. So, bit long and drawn out, but thank you for watching.